Welcome to Railway Legends, Myths, and Stories. I'm Kevin Stanley. In this episode, we will peek back a hundred years, or perhaps 200. While the era of modern rail began in the early 19th century, at that time, photography was not readily available and not all that common until the middle of the 19th century. And then the availability of motion pictures did not come until almost the end of that century. So while we have many paintings and some early photographs, there is only the tiniest bit of early films of trains. While there are a few short railroad documentary films from 1897 to 1906 that give us some idea of what trains were like, it would be nice to look a lot further back. Let's see what could be done. We're recording this episode in the year 2023, so I want to take a look at parts of the film Our Hospitality. This film was made in 1923, and while it is a comedy, it does attempt to depict rail travel almost a hundred years earlier. One of the wonderful things about this film is that it gives us a sort of look at some of the parts of railway travel of those very early years. We have used a clip of this film before in our video about making a train, but there are other parts of rail operations we would like to point out. Our hospitality, as I said, was made in 1923 and is a silent film. It stars Buster Keaton. Keaton is well known for his physical comedy. And if we allow for the comedic exaggeration, this movie can give a little glimpse of what railroading might have been like in its earliest days. One point I need to emphasize is that when this film was made, there were very few, if any, special effects, at least as far as train footage goes. These shots were made with a real working locomotive and real rail cars, and while they were built for this film, they are working rail equipment. Here we see a train with passengers loading. Yes, in many places the tracks would run right through the main street of a town, and loading was done something like this. This train is obviously similar to those in paintings of early railroads, such as this one of the Mohawk and Hudson Railroad. Rather than use a replica of the locomotive DeWitt Clinton, as shown in the painting, Keaton instructed art director Fred Grayborn to build a replica of Robert Stevenson's rocket because he thought it looked funnier. Besides, no other locomotive name says very early train than the name Rocket. Yes, it would be possible to push such a locomotive a short distance along the track, like we see here. The man with the top hat and the horn is the train's conductor. In the earliest years, no conductor would be without a top hat. He might even dress even more flamboyantly than this. The locomotive driver is seen pouring oil on parts of the engine, and again, this is not out of the question, as on many early locomotives, this was the main way that many moving parts received their lubrication. Oiling around a steam locomotive was common with all steam locomotive. Boarding the train could be an adventure in itself. With these reproduction cars, we see the use of what is called through brace suspension. This is a set of leather straps that run under the car body. While this was far better than no suspension at all, it was not always up to the task. The carriages look like stagecoaches, which is appropriate because most early passenger cars were built by stagecoach builders, and they built what they already knew how to build. The horn was an early way of giving signals to the driver. As the train begins to move, we see the problem of slack action jerking the passengers about. While this is perhaps overdone for comedic effect, much of what people who rode trains in this period wrote tend to make this look almost typical. Here we see people gathering to watch and wave as the train goes by. Well, this still happens. The more unique the train, the bigger the crowds. I have to admit that I went out on my porch and waved to the passenger train that passed my house this morning. In this scene, the train stops to put off a rider without a ticket. This too can happen. 
I have been on a train when the conductor found a ticketless rider and they were put off at the next stop, not in the middle of nowhere. However, it's not unheard of even today for a train to stop at a grade crossing and deliver a troublesome passenger to the local law enforcement agency. Sadly, yes, people do sometimes throw things at moving trains. This is not at all nice and it can be very dangerous, even if it is a way to get some free firewood in this particular case. I really doubt that this is a fair depiction of how early track was laid, but well, early American track was not all that well known for how well it was constructed. Now this bump in the track is clearly just here for comedic effect, but it does show that the early trains might have to handle track that is nowhere near as smooth as track is today. At least one can hope so anyway. The next time you're on a train and think the ride is a little uneven, think about this traculence and count yourself lucky. Now let's look at this scene where the cars pass the locomotive on a siding. While this is, of course, a great comic bit, there is still something to learn here. First, let's take a quick look at the points of these switches. This is known as a stub switch, where the ends of the rails are cut flat rather than tapered, as in nearly all modern switches. They have long since been superseded. This type of switch can be very hazardous. Let's look again at the action as the switch is thrown. This kind of operation, known as a flying switch, was done intentionally on a continuous basis for many years. One major railway did this with most of its trains at a specific station for many years. But that's a story for another day. As a matter of fact, Lisa and I, on one of our trips, traveled on a mixed passenger and freight train that did a flying switch in regular revenue service. RLMS heartily recommends this movie. It is in the public domain, and you can find it in many places on the internet. We hope you've enjoyed this look back into both cinema and railroad history. And as always, we'll see you on the train, no matter how old it is. RLMS heartily recommends this movie. It is in the public domain and you can find it in many places on the internet. We hope you've enjoyed this look back into cinema and railroad history. And as always, we'll see you on the train, no matter how old it is.